The more as time goes by, the more I think about what the Wii was. And when it came to the games, sure you had your shovelware. A lot of shovelware. But there was still a lot of quality, as well as variety and said quality across a ton of genres. Racing games, action games, adventure games, platformers both in 2D, 3D, and sometimes even in the middle, RPGs, sports, fighting games, and many, many others. It wasn't just that casual console with gimmicky motion controls and mediocre minigame collections. I mean, that certainly was a part of the Wii's identity. And it didn't help that the very series named after the console were mostly minigame collections that were all about gimmicky motion controls. To the Wii series' credit, most of the games in it were honestly pretty good, the best of them being among the best the console had to offer. But there are some notable exceptions that are generally agreed upon. Uh, three, to be exact. Or more like two and a half, one of them is Wii Chess and that only ever released physically as a budget title in Europe and digitally for WiiWare in Japan and I mean like... It's chess? The second game of note here is Wii Play, otherwise known back in the day as I don't really want that game, but that extra Wii remote that comes bundled with it's looking kinda nice. It's okay. It got me too. We can talk about our shared pain together. I'm not gonna act like there wasn't fun to be had in Wii Play. I did go back to it every now and then as a kid, because these nine quick and easy games were a decent fit for an eight-year-old me with a lack of an attention span and patience. Although, even back then, I knew that the tank minigame was more substantial and pretty much everything else included. Nowadays, there's hardly any reason to go back to it as the quick and easy nature of the game doesn't really merit setting up a Wii or Wii U in this day and age. I mean, take it from someone who still has his Wii U set up, it really isn't worth my time. Even with the tank minigame, it's just not enough. And I mean, I like my billiards, but Sega had the market cornered on that front both before and after this game came out. It's not that Wii Play was bad, it was just okay. And when a game like this is just okay, nothing really special about it, at that point you've lost the battle. With so many games out there and only so much time to play them, standing out and giving a worthwhile experience is paramount. We Play Motion, I will argue, still has value to this day, and is pretty good, but We Play... Come on, Zeter, you're better than this. We Play, with its nine simplistic to a fault minigames, just doesn't have any footing in this day and age. Not that it had that much back in the day, admittedly. We all just wanted that extra Wii remote, we really did. Things were different back in the day. I bring all this up, We Play especially, because it all relates to the third game in this list, and the main topic of this video. You see, We Play originally started out as a bunch of tech demos demonstrating what the Wii could do, a number of which being compiled in the game we all know and remember. Others were the basis for another game, with the more sport-themed tech demos leading to the creation of Wii Sports. However, apparently due to time constraints, a few of these tech demos didn't make it into either of those games, and would later find their way into other Nintendo games, such as Nintendo Land and Wii Fit. Oh, yeah. But then there was this one minigame, one that had you conducting an orchestra with the Wii Remote. This was actually going to be in Wii Play, that was the plan. And it wasn't removed due to time constraints, but rather because the developers really liked it. They liked it so much, in fact, that they thought they could make a whole game based around it. Or well, not around that specifically, but rather, a whole game based around music. I mean, the idea was sound. Or, well, the idea was music. Uh, among the genres I listed off at the start of this video, one I didn't mention earlier was music games. The Wii did have its fair share of them, but it mostly comprised of multi-platform games that every console had. Rock Band, Guitar Hero, Michael Jackson The Experience. That being said, music-based games are some of the most notable on the console for being among the very last breaths of life for the Wii. Rhythm Heaven Fever was one of the last first-party Wii games released, and is also one of the very best. Just, you know, don't go looking for a physical copy nowadays. And look, we meme it up all we want, but look at how long Ubisoft went with putting a new Just Dance game on the Wii and tell me they were wrong for doing it. The games had their place, and pretty much every notable music game on the Wii still arguably has its place to this day. And then there's you. Rock Band and Guitar Hero appeals to a casual crowd who wanted to feel like they could actually play instruments to recognizable songs. Rhythm Heaven Fever appeals to people by providing that special Nintendo flair to rhythm games and getting the most out of keeping things simple with a limited control scheme. And most importantly, all of these games provide a lot of fun. But what if you had a game that happened to successfully combine 
all of these aspects into one game? And what if you instead had a game that tried to do that, but poorly? Well, Wii Music kind of falls somewhere in between. Right in between your eyes! The year was 2008, and Wii Music was released by Nintendo with the idea that it was a music game that's for everyone. It wouldn't matter if you had years of experience with an instrument or none at all, anyone could pick up a Wii Remote and Nunchuck and play the piano to some Vivaldi and have it sound, for lack of a better term, right. Now, I say music game because, well, it is. I mean, that's even what it says on the back of the box. So it's a safe assumption to call it a music game, right? Well, my curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to learn more about what the developers of this game had in mind when creating it, which led me to reading up on some interviews, including the Awada Asks for Wii Music, which has the man himself talking with several key figures who worked on it. I'll be bringing this up specifically several times throughout this video, but in regards to what I was looking for to explain what exactly Wii Music is, let's see what one of the producers has to say. A one Shigeru Miyamoto, when asked what is Wii Music, had this to say. Hmm. It's something we made with the idea of turning the joy of music into a game. It isn't a musical instrument, but it isn't a video game either. It's something like no other. Which he says isn't a musical instrument here, but then he later refers to it as such, once in an exaggerated sense to be fair in the same section. Then in a later part that came out after Wii Music's release, he says this. That's why I think Wii Music is an incredibly advanced musical instrument. The instrument of the future. Overseas, I was telling everyone about how it's a new kind of instrument that anyone can easily learn to play and enjoy. Bro. Look, if Wii Music is an instrument, then it's the video game equivalent of a recorder. He also calls it a tool that you use some way to somehow create something. And during a QA at an E3 roundtable... Yes, that... E3. When a journalist pointed out the lack of typical video game elements made it more of a musical toy than a game, Miyamoto said, Yes, that's right, and that's why it's more interesting than a video game. And that's all he had to say on the matter. Granted, I wouldn't put too much stock into how Miyamoto refers to Wii Music like this. Most of the other developers in the Iwata Asks generally refer to Wii Music in the sense that it is a video game. Generally, they talk about how it's meant to focus on having fun with playing music, more in the creative and approachable sense. They wanted people with no musical experience at all to be able to pick up and play with ease, not focus on playing songs exactly like you see them with other popular rhythm games at the time, and hopefully encourage more people to learn how to play real musical instruments or get into music in general. Take what the first-time director of this game, Kazumi Tataka, had to say about Wii Music, for example. I've always hoped this game would serve as the starting point for new encounters with music. I think there's a connection between the fun I have playing this game and the enjoyment I get out of playing a real musical instrument, so I'm not exaggerating when I say Wii Music could lead you to take up a real musical instrument. I sincerely hope people who have given up on music or think they're not the type to play an instrument will play this game. You know how when you were a little kid and you saw a musical instrument, you'd bang on it or randomly blow through it? I hope this game reawakens that desire in you. So that's what I believe Miyamoto is trying to get across when he's referring to Wii Music as a musical instrument. That's where the idea of Wii Music as a new kind of musical instrument really comes into play. I don't actually think he means this literally, but more that he's exaggerating to make Wii Music feel more special and unique in the gaming sphere. Because this is a music game. I'll go a bit more into the development of the game throughout the video, but let's get into why we're really here, and start looking into what Wii Music actually has to offer. When the game starts up, you're greeted by the game's main maestro, Sebastian II. You'll quickly note... Yeah, but turn it over! There's a letter! This man is not a me. He, along with the other characters in this game, are known as Toots, which... look like they were originally Mies, but they're more a cross between Mies and Muppets. Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem, they are not, though. We jam us! Yeah. You pick your me... oh, oh. Right, I, I never made me's for my We Use We Me channel. And I don't know who this is. I fixed this after the first recording session and made a fair amount of me's for my other consoles, and, uh. 
Moving on, I could go into the next part myself, but my man, Sebastian Toot, is here to do my job for me. Now, I bet you're wondering how to play instruments on the Wii. It's easy. Just hold the controllers, then mimic playing an instrument. You can play most instruments using one of the four control methods. Once you get the hang of the four methods, you'll be ready to play any Wii music instrument easily. We then get a short toot oriel on the four basic methods of playing an instrument. Piano type, guitar type, trumpet type, and violin type. The first method is best played with a Wii remote and a nunchuck. The secret is to just relax and move as if you're playing a piano while you're holding the Wii remote and nunchuck. And I thought I was past my performance anxiety. Essentially, depending on the style, you'll want to hold the Wii remote and or nunchuck accordingly. But like, really? You'll want to hold it how they tell you, because that's what the game expects you to do. It's not going to pick up your motions as well in, say, the guitar style, if you're not actually stands up like you're playing a guitar. Notice the delay when I do it. Like, it doesn't register as much, but if I do it from the side like this... It's a lot more responsive when I do it this way. Even if you don't care about immersion, it's best that you look and feel a bit dumb. Just get over it, and get into it. For piano style, you have both controllers in front of you, like so, and shake downward to make a sound which, like the game says, as if striking piano keys. Pressing A or C while shaking the controller makes the last note of the melody of the song you're playing, unless you're on the chord part of a song, in which case you'll play the note of a chord one at a time instead of together. B or Z will shorten the note you play, kind of like a staccato note, and cut off extended notes, basically acting like you're manually stopping the vibration of an instrument. I tried so hard to play Megalovania here. With guitar style, you hold the nunchuck as if you were gripping a guitar neck, and the Wii Remote like your hand was ready to strum. You also have to make sure you're strumming the guitar by shaking the Wii Remote downward, because if you try to strum the Wii Remote upward, it won't register the movement and a sound won't be played. Strumming upward is something you can do on a guitar, I mean... Oh, out of tune. Lots of people do it actually, but we're on the Wii here, you gotta make some limitations for a smoother gameplay experience, that's fine. A, B, and Z all work like they did with the piano style, however, the C button is a different story. A story that the game does not tell you in its tutorials, so we'll come back to it. Although, both the A and C buttons do still work identically to the piano style during chord parts. The trumpet style is probably the simplest, it being the only one to use just the Wii Remote. All you do is hold the controller like a trumpet, with the D-pad facing you, and press the 1 or 2 button to play a note with your dominant hand. The other hand will press the A or B button, A working the same as the other styles, and B allows you to perform a glissando for some instruments, and a trill for others. This is a glissando, and this is a trill. Ooh, and one more thing, by tilting the Wii Remote up or down, you can change the volume of how you play. Yeah, actual dynamic control, that's kinda neat. That being said, it isn't really a great representation of the kind of posture you should have while playing instruments like this. With a trumpet, or instruments like it, it's best to have your back straight, elbows out as such, and the instrument pointed outward practically at an eye level, if not a little higher. Again, like with the guitar strumming, they're doing this to work around the limitations of the Wii, and it's a fine and fun way to do it. I just wanted to point this out as someone who's played a brass instrument for about nine years or so. Oh, uh, not, th not this instrument, no, well, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get there. Trust me. One other thing, uh, this isn't mentioned in the tutorial, I just thought it was best to bring it up now. Along with the trumpet style, there is also the flute style. It plays literally the same as the trumpet style, you just hold it the same way that you would a flute, and to change the volume, you instead tilt the Wii Remote forward or backward. This style is used for the flute, the harmonica, and nothing else because flute players are just entitled like that. I'm not better. On a similar level of entitlement, we have the violin style, which also only has two instruments, those being the violin and the cello. The positioning is kind of like guitar style, just think more so along the lines of holding a violin in its bow. You move the Wii Remote back and forth like so, pressing C, Z, or B to make a sound. And, once again, the A button works just like every other style, same for the chord parts. You'll play almost everything using these controls. Almost indeed. We'll get there. Aha! Surprised at my size? Well, I mean, you're kinda short, but... 
Sure, I'm tiny, but I'll help you be a big star before long. Oh, uh, we're learning about that side of music. The rest of this tutorial is piano-based, and goes into the typical things when playing a song in this game. You have these things in the bottom right, called bebops, which more or less act like a metronome and are meant to help you keep rhythm. You'll notice that there are four of them, and that's because every song in this game is using a 4x4 time signature. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4 beats in a single measure. They also count the half steps, or eighth notes, in between, which you can see when their nose flashes orange at the apex of their jump. If you're having trouble with your timing while looking at the chart and hearing other parts of the song, just focus on these. Bebops change color and shape, but I'll explain what that means another time, okay? Sebastian Toot then has you play the iconic, unforgettable, song of a generation classic, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So, how did that feel? Like a little star. Good! But I thought it was gonna be a big star! Well, then you should have sucked my dick! But playing a song as plain as that is not what we Music's goal is here. To put it bluntly, they want you to fuck around. Add some notes, play the regular notes at different times, or just do whatever. The most important thing is that you have fun, feel the music, and express yourself. You try and jam for a bit, and that's when they bust out the other players to give yourself a taste of how it is to play with other instruments. In Wii Music, we call playing in a group like this a jam session. In a jam session, you have six parts. Chord, bass, two percussion parts, harmony, and of course, melody, which is what they have you do on the piano here. After explaining this, you're thrown into an actual jam, play through Twinkle Twinkle Little Star fully, fully, And that's the performance. And don't worry if you didn't play perfectly, because there's no one way to play a song. But there are definitely wrong ways. There are millions of ways. Countless, even. Just have fun expressing yourself. We're still not done here, though. After a jam, you can save the performance as a video to keep a permanent scar, and I mean memory, for all time. First, you rate the performance yourself on a scale from 0 to 100. And look, music's subjective. Next up, you'll create a cover jacket for the video, using the band members in it, as well as various frames and backgrounds to give it some unique visual identity. It's a pretty neat feature. Each instrument has four poses to choose from that you can zoom in and out of, rotate the characters around, or just turn them into a severed head. Whatever works. Honestly, for what this is, you can get some good mileage out of this. I'm expressing with my full capabilities, and now I'm living in correctional facilities. And with that, you're all done. Oddly enough, this is the only time you make a jam where you aren't forced to watch it right after finishing. Sir Toot goes over what you have available in Wii Music, also mentioning that you'll only have 5 starter songs to begin playing with, and that if we want all 50 of them, well... Make a few videos! Our songs let you explore many styles, pop classics, world music, classical music, so you discover your style. And just like that, it's up to the player to discover all that Wii Music has to offer for the better and worse. Alright, now that we're past the tutorial, let's talk about what the game didn't talk about. Sure, the tutorial gives you the basic guidelines on how to play the game, but it leaves out quite a bit. To be fair though, most things not in the tutorial can be read up on in the instrument improv section. It's a neat little area where you can try out all the instruments, read up on some legitimately neat info on them, and most importantly, properly learn the ins and outs of each playstyle. By selecting how to play, the game tells you the controls, mostly the basics and what you're already taught, but a uh, hang on a minute, what's this? Glissando on the piano type? Yep, done only with the nunchucks control stick, pressing in a direction while playing a note will make you play a pretty little glissando. It's not much, but there's a fun bit of added depth there. Checking out guitar type, there's a nunchuck only feature as well, with pitch shifting, letting you bring a note up or down in pitch. Not only that, but there's also a quick strum feature that's used by pressing down the D-pad.
Ow. Even the violin style has a hidden trick with the double stop feature, basically allowing you to play two notes at once when you hold the nunchuck's control stick up. These are neat. These are fun to mess around with. Why are they not told to you outside of the how to play info, which most people would probably think is just a refresher on stuff they already know? Why hide it behind a virtual instruction booklet or bother including them at all while doing nothing with them? God damn it. But Miyamoto-san said that even if we didn't explain everything, players would have a good time discovering differences in sound that arose when they tried something new, like hitting a button. That can happen when you play a real musical instrument, too. Sudden, he called these features side dishes. Look, I get wanting to leave things in the game for people to discover on their own. In fact, I only found out about the quick strumming by accident because I wanted to show off with the D-pad animations and noticed that the guitar playing sounded weird. Discovering it was a cool feeling, I'll admit, but I also asked myself, why didn't they just outright tell me I could do that in the tutorial? They do tell you about stuff like this, but it's kind of hidden away. I mean, there's a reason that most of the people who look at this game don't really bring this stuff up and say that you don't really need a nunchuck. Because all that you can do, and only can do with a nunchuck, is not very well conveyed. So as neat as stuff like this is, why put these features in the game and not really do anything with them? As it turns out, these, uh, side dishes were put into the game very late into development. Late as in right before the E3 the year the game came out. Yes. That E3. The reason these were even put in the game to begin with, though, was at the request of Miyamoto. Apparently, this man plays guitar. He said electric guitar isn't really electric guitar if you can't choke it, and folk guitar isn't any fun if you're just pluck, pluck, plucking away. He said really laying on the chords is part of the acceleration of folk guitar, and he was absolutely right. The reason these features were added were simply for the sake of fun. I'm sure they could have added more to do with these features, but then they run the risk of a simplistic music game becoming a bit more complicated than they wanted. One attractive aspect of the game was bringing out the particular characteristics of each instrument, but easy operability common to all the instruments was also important. Miyamoto-san was afraid we were going to lose what was most attractive. So that's why stuff like the quick strum, the double stop, and the piano glissando, although cool, are kept on the sidelines. But even with all that, there's still stuff they don't outright tell you. For example, you know how you can control the volume of instruments with the trumpet style by raising and lowering the Wii remote? Well, as it turns out, every instrument has a form of volume control. When it comes to instruments that require you to shake the Wii remote, the volume changes depending on how light or hard you swing the Wii remote. This goes for piano style, guitar style, violin style, and even percussion style. Uh, wait, percussion style? Yeah, along with the four styles in the tutorial, there's an additional three for you to find out about on your own. Flute style we already covered, but there's also a unique section for instruments with a unique style to themselves, including the Wiro, Kuika, Whistle, which is honestly way too similar to trumpet style, like don't get why they separated this, and DJ turntables. There's also a rapper hand style? I'm the kind of guy that's mild, but I might flip and get a little bit wilder. Which is unique, I guess, but they're instead included with the piano style instruments and not this section, for some reason. Fuck you with an umbrella and open it up, but it inside ya. I get why they wouldn't go over these two styles. But then there's percussion style, which contains all the various drums and other assorted instruments, including the most dangerous instrument of them all, these hands. <laughs> Finally, the sound of one hand clapping. They went over violin style, which has two instruments total, but skipped over percussion style, which literally has the most instruments in the game. Do instruments of torture count? Even just the drumming mode with the Wii balance board, which we'll go over later, has more instrument variety than violin and flute style combined. My guess is that they held off on percussion style in the tutorial since they had a whole extra mode just for drum sets, and they didn't want to be redundant, especially since it's close enough to piano style. You know, which makes sense considering pianos are percussion instruments. Yeah, the divide between these two gets weird, especially when you have instruments like the timpani, steel, drums, and a whole-ass harp in the piano section. 
why stop there, Nintendo? You've already got rapper style lodged in there, why not throw the castanets or the beatboxer in there as well? Yeah, there are some odd instruments in this game. Which, hey, that's a good thing. It can be fun to do some out there stuff, like playing the drum part in Mute City as a cheerleader. There is generally a pretty good instrument variety here, once you unlock them all, of course. Sure, most of them sound... Not real, but hey, real's not real, so whatever. It's a Wii game, you kinda gotta go in expecting a certain quality. For what it's worth, I think they sound good enough for what the game is trying to be and do. Although I am also the guy who thinks Pokemon Stadium soundtrack is really good, despite its blatant mini sound. So that should give you a good idea of how I gauge my opinions of this kind of stuff. Speaking of variety, the game did mention being able to let you explore many styles, and the main way the game teaches you that is through the Jam Mastery section. After you unlock it. Remember, much like what my brain has been telling me for the past four years, you gotta make them videos. And pussy too! No one man's You've got 11 different styles here, all using instruments especially catered to them in order to bring out the kind of sound you expect when you think of classical, Latin, etc. Some don't use the full amount of instrument slots, but most have you playing six different parts, all coming together to really bring that style alive. Not every instrument in the game is used, but that's fine. I mean, some of these are kind of a style of their own, and it's not like they're struggling to put together a full set of instruments for each style. Oh my god, oh, And then there's the marching style, which has a bass drum, marching snare, tuba, and three trumpets. Three! Chord, harmony, melody, all trumpets! All of them. Now look, I like me a bit of trumpet, but really. They had other instruments that are used in marching bands available. Flutes, clarinets, saxophones, howl the whistle if you want to get creative. But okay, maybe they didn't want to use any woodwinds or any stuff like that and focus on the more traditionally bombastic brass side of things. Sure, I get it. Three trumpets though? But the thing is, they have to use three trumpets, because for whatever reason, there are 66 instruments in this game, and only two of those are traditional brass instruments. And the trumpet and tuba are essential, don't get me wrong, they should be here. But if you were planning on having a whole marching style to learn, maybe consider adding one more instead of like... Rapper. Baritone, euphonium, French horn, nothing like that. And, uh, I can't help but feel like they missed one really obvious one. I don't know, maybe it's just me, my personal experience, but I feel like there's one very common, iconic, essential brass instrument that's especially missing in this here, uh, this here game. What's up, Nintendo? Where's my trombone? You know, the, uh, the trombone? <laughs> Is that supposed to be a question? Not Tron Bon, Tron Bone! You telling me you don't know what this is? Because I can't see any other reason why you wouldn't include it in this game. Is it not unique enough? Or is the funny slide too intimidating? Come on, Nintendo, what's the problem here? Are you trying to say trombones aren't even worth putting in? Don't you lecture me with your $30 haircut! <laughs> You know what the worst thing is? It is in the game, and the French horn! You can see Mies playing them in the conductor mode. They have models for them in the game, but I guess that wasn't enough motivation to make them actually playable. But the trombone is just too unique of an instrument, thanks to the funny slide. They'd have to make a playstyle just for it. So? There's already several instruments where that's the case, and flute and violin style gets their own category despite only having two instruments in them. And hell, they didn't even need to go that far. They could have just made it a trumpet style instrument. That would have been fine. I'm not asking them to include a bass trombone, an F trigger trombone, nothing fancy like that. Just a good old fashioned standard tenor trombone. But no, no trombone playable at all, despite its perfect fit in styles like marching and jazz. None of that. But sure, three trumpet parts. And I'm not just ranting about this because of my years of experience playing this thing. No, I've been pissed about this since the game came out, before I even learned how to hold this properly. So on behalf of me and all the many, many trombone players out there in the world, fuck off. I like how I'm more passionate about this than characters I wanted not getting in Smash. Anyhow, with how these style lessons go, you'll take it part by part. 
usually in the routine of percussion, percussion, bass, chord, harmony, and melody. It's a nice way to give you a taste of how it is to build on a performance, and honestly, it can feel pretty good sometimes. Like, it can get boring going through all these, since they all follow the same pattern, and some of the parts aren't the most interesting. But when you get to the melody and harmony especially, and you're playing the more fun part while being backed up by all the parts you've done, I'll admit it usually feels satisfying, especially if you try to spice up your performance and be creative, like the devs want you to be. But again, the repetition can really get to you, especially since all the lessons here are played with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. All 11 of them, and that's after already having it be in the tutorial. This is a common complaint with Wii Music, which is mostly understandable. On the one hand, practicing all these different styles on a single song could be an easy way for someone to better comprehend the variations. On the other hand, they couldn't have picked something a little more interesting. I get that it's simple on purpose, for people to have an easier way to learn. It's all in a different style and with different instruments, sure, but it's still more or less doing the same thing over and over again. And I mean, some people pick up instruments and go straight to learning how to play one of their favorite songs, even if it's not exactly beginner friendly. Wouldn't it be better to have two options so that those who want the repetition of the same kind of song and those that want variety are both happy? Well, to funny story, that is an option. Kind of. You see, after playing the rock lesson, if you make a few more videos in the jam mode, you unlock the expand your style lessons, which actually have you playing other songs. The lessons themselves are slightly more advanced, having you play two different parts depending on the section of the song you're at, signaled by the changing color and shape of the bebops in order to change the mood, but it's otherwise the same kind of gig. It is still rather repetitive, and admittedly, by the time I got through the first few, I felt fine with not going through the rest. You only have to play through the rock and pop lessons here in order to unlock everything, so you won't be missing much. Speaking of unlocks, yes, you do have to go through a process in order to have the full range of options available to you. Making videos of your jams, technically you'll only need to make about a total of 8 to get everything, doing the rock and pop jam lessons, and playing through all of the side games that we'll go over later is how you unlock everything. This is how you'll unlock all the songs, instruments, and options used to customize jams. These options include things like changing the style, tempo, or how and what parts are used. For some reason, you have to go through the pop mastery lesson in order to get the option to remove parts of a song, which was such a simple and obvious thing to have normally that I didn't even realize I couldn't do that before I unlocked it. But yeah, that allows you to craft your jam band into whatever best reflects the deepest desire in your musical soul. You can have a guitarist, a drummer, a bassist, another guitarist, it doesn't take too much time to unlock everything, and I get that it's this way to ease people into everything, but I do wish that the game just made everything available at the start, or that there was at least a cheat code you could input to instantly do so. Most of that desire comes from the fact that you start off with 5 of the 50 songs available in the jam mode, and those songs aren't much to drum up excitement. Actually, let's take this time to go over the song list and what it has to offer. You have four different categories of song here. Classical, where you've got your Mozart, your Beethoven, you get the idea. Traditional, or folk music, which is stuff along the lines of Frere Jaca, La Cucaracha, Oh My Darling Don't Cry, I mean Oh My Darling Clementine. There's even Happy Birthday to You, which is especially surprising considering this was back when the song was still in copyright limbo. I mean, hell, even Futurama couldn't get it. What day is today? It's Nibbler's birthday! Or at the very least, they didn't try to get it. Third is popular, or pop music, which, despite being called that, only has songs from the late 50s to the mid 80s. Don't get me wrong, I love songs like Wake Me Up Before You Go Go and September, it's nice seeing The Police and Madonna in there, and playing this game did make me go and listen to the original version of Daydream Believer. Original version, yeah, since the songs here aren't just versions played with the in-game instruments, but shortened to under two minutes and simplified to fit within Wii Music's typical song structure. This is something that can especially feel off with the popular songs. In all fairness though, I think the songs they chose are mostly good. But like, you couldn't have gotten any songs from the 90s? None of the hundreds of rock bands making hits then? They didn't think to include any of that? No, say it ain't so! Surely there'd be at least one band popular from back then that would have been down? Oasis! I mean, they already had one of their new songs at the time used for an anime opening, had an older song or two used in Rock Band. They're no stranger to this kind of stuff. Plus, the Gallagher brothers are tools! They would have loved to have Wonderwall in this game. 
but why is there a clown? Why is there a clown in the Wonderwall music video? Why is this here? Or like, on the other side of time, no jazz classics from back in the day that would have fit right in with me music like Autumn Leaves? Nothing like that? No, that's not in the cards. But we can have the song Woman, written by none other than John Lennon. The man who beat a woman called his wife, like how I beat John Lennon back in 1979 with an unplugged GameCube. Back when music had a soul! Imagine there's no heaven. Especially for John Lennon. Finally, we have Game, or songs from other Nintendo games. It's fairly standard stuff, the Super Mario Bros. theme, a Legend of Zelda theme, which reminds me of the one from the GameCube Collector's Edition menu, Animal Crossing Wild World and City Folk's main theme, KK Blues, also from Animal Crossing, so we do have at least one idle song, Mute City from F-Zero, and themes for both Wii Sports and Wii Music, of course. Uh, wow, Zeter, you sure listed off a good handful of songs to highlight the Nintendo games category. What else do they have? I mean, it's their very own music game, and they have loads of great music they could throw in, so what else do they put in? Nothing. That's it. Only seven songs, one of them being the main theme of the game itself. It's the shortest of the four categories, and that leads us to, in my opinion, the biggest problem with Wii Music's track list. The imbalance of categories. Of the four categories, we have Game at the lowest with seven songs, Classical just above with eight songs, 13 popular songs, and 22 traditional songs. Oh, look, I get it. It's important for a game like this, which is trying to make music appeal to everyone, including those with a lack of musical experience, to keep things simple and understandable, which traditional songs are good for. But maybe don't have almost half of the game's song list consist of them? I'm not saying load it up with nothing but modern rock and pop hits, in fact, considering they were trying to do something different from music games like Guitar Hero and Rock Band, there was probably an effort to avoid that kind of stuff, and I get that. The thing is, though, this is still a game, with a lot of gamers looking at it. Myself included. It would have made a fair amount of sense to at least have a decent selection from their other franchises. Playing songs like Mute City is honestly pretty fun, even if it doesn't go much further than a bit of air guitar. It's not like the song list is bad, and 50 is a decent number to have, it's just not very interesting overall. Here's the thing, though. That list of 50 songs? That was originally going to be 10. Not only that, it was all classical music. Which is a bit odd, considering there's not even 10 classical songs in the final game. The reason for that original limit was because making the compositions for the songs to work with how the game is took a lot of effort from the developers. Not only were they making parts for all these instruments to work in a song, but they also had to make sure that the improvisations made by players, both experienced in music and not, sounded right no matter how they played. Right. The choice to stick with classical originally was so that people all around the world, non-gamers included, I would assume, would recognize the songs. Going back to the Awada asks on Wii Music, another reasoning made by the developer Makoto Wada for the 10 songs was that, there were only 10 songs, but you could play around with different arrangements. We thought 10 songs would be playing to serve as material for that. So then, how do we get to 50 in the final game, you may ask? Well, you can thank Miyamoto for that. After seeing Wii Music only had 10 songs while being consulted about it, he said that there should be more, suggesting a total of 100 songs. The team did work after that to try and get 100 songs in the game, but first-time director Kazumi Tataka later tried to compromise by limiting the total to 50. I knew it would be incredibly hard, but after I thought about it, I decided 100 songs were necessary, so we should do it. But I thought that with so many songs, a lot of them would sound the same. And besides, like Wada-san just said, one song could be played a number of different ways. In the end, Miyamoto let the devs stick with 50 songs, although anything less, he said, would be too little. So considering all that, I'm more understanding about Wii Music song selection, as I'm guessing the surplus of traditional songs came from trying to reach their 50 song goal, while also not making writing all the instrument parts for every song a total pain in the ass. But like, at the same time, surely it wouldn't have been that much harder to swap some of those traditional tunes for other Nintendo songs. I mean, if having songs sound the same was the problem, that would have been a good way to get around it. Let me just pull up the file here.
uh, wait a second. That song's actually in the game? Well, no, but believe it or not, Wii music has a bit of a modding scene. Oh. Want more than what the base game has to offer? Of course you do, now stop complaining. The Wii music modding scene has you covered, with plenty more songs at your disposal, including iconic tunes such as the signature theme song of the Dame Dane guy, Bakamitai, The song that could only be described as the sound of the soma, get loke. And the pop classic from the king of pop himself, Smooth Criminal. Believe me, there's a fair amount of unique mods out there. Some of these modded songs are legit impressive too, like the Monsters Inc. theme in Wii Music works way too well. And there's not just songs, no, there's a whole song editor, Wii Music Editor Plus, so that anyone can make their own charts, and in a way that's fairly straightforward and convenient. Why that has to be a mod and not a feature in the game, I don't know, but it's cool to see. Considering I was expecting nothing to be there in regards to Wii Music modding, there is a surprisingly decent amount of modded content that's around. The Wii Music modding scene is kinda interesting, gotta hand it to them. Now listen, music's great and all, but I'm a gamer. And when I see games, I'm gonna go for those games. We have three minigames here, so let's go over them from top to bottom. Me Maestro, you might recognize as the orchestration minigame that Wii Music originated from. You play it by using the Wii Remote as a conducting baton, waving it around to whatever tempo you want to have the song play at, keep things consistent, or change the speed the orchestra plays at erratically. Suffer! Suffer! You're scored by how well you do, but don't ask me what that means, because I didn't figure it out. I think it's by how well you can keep a consistent tempo, as well as how smooth you change the tempos, but I don't know. The highest I was able to originally get was 89, but then the game gave me the hint that by pressing A or B while I'm conducting, I can have the orchestra hit an accent. I went through a song doing just that, honestly laying it on a bit too thick, but otherwise playing it normally, and... <laughs> I don't know, man. I'll be honest, for as simple as it is, this mode's really fun. As someone who likes to move around and vibe out while I'm listening to more exciting music, this appeals to me in a similar sense. Just, you know, maybe don't play it around people if you think you might get carried away with it. There is one issue, and that's the song selection. By which I mean, there's only five songs to play. You have Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Carmen, Opening Night by Weezer, Shakespeare makes me happy. Ode to Joy, Paggle 2! And the Legend of Zelda theme I mentioned earlier, which playing it here is actually how you unlock the song. I like playing through these songs here, except you. I just want more. I see where they were coming from when they originally developed this as a part of Wii Play, because if they had this beat for beat, every song included here like it is, it might have been my favorite part of Wii Play. Next up is Handbell Harmony, which requires the Wii Remote and Nunchuck. You choose what set of handbells you want, which dictates what notes you'll be playing, and when the bell lines up with the play line, you shake the corresponding controller, like playing a handbell. I feel like I'm Christmas caroling again. There's also symboled notes, which you play by pressing the respective button for whatever controller you're using to hit. It's a fairly traditional rhythm game setup. It's cute, but honestly kind of boring. Also doesn't help that, like me maestro, the song selection is limited to five songs. Not a great selection, either. Oh, Christmas Tree, Hum Hum Hum, My Grandfather's Cock, My Grandfather's Clock, Do Re Mi, and Sukiyaki. One last thing I'll say about this minigame is that something about the sensitivity of the controller feels kind of off, more so than the rest of the game. I don't know, something just didn't feel right about playing this mode. But also, I don't really care about this mode, so maybe I just suck. Finally, we have Pitch Perfect. You have eight different levels of mostly the same sequence of music questions. You'll be quizzed on things such as which instruments are playing the same pitch, which three instruments make a correct chord, and, one I really like, sequencing means to try and put the notes in the correct order. It kind of reminds me of the Town Tune creator in Animal Crossing. You get score at the end by how much time you have left, with you starting off with 30 seconds and gaining 15 more every time you complete a section. Try to beat my scores. I bet there's one you'll have trouble with. The levels are fairly similar, and playing them all in a row gets very repetitive, but I do still like this mode. I think it's a decent way to get people more attuned with how correct tones are supposed to sound, while keeping it fun and interesting. Just don't do it all at once. 
That's about it for the minigames, and overall, well, they're there. They're not why you're here, but they provide some fun and a bit of variety, and I think that was the point. They enhance the game by being here, but don't provide much substance by themselves. I do think there's room for more to be done with them, and if they were to further develop and add on to the best parts, like having more songs for Mi Maestro, or using that sequencing segment in Pitch Perfect to maybe include a song sequencer like in Mario Paint, that could go a long way. Wishful thinking, though. I'm a dreamer. I like thinking of what-if scenarios. Stuff like that really gets me going, like, man, if only. And isn't that what music's all about? But the thing is, we don't have to only think about something like that. Because there is one more extra mode in this game, and it's easily more substantial than those other three minigames. In fact, it's the most developed part of this game outside of the main jam mode. Not a lot of people actually talk about this one, though. And that's probably because of this little guy. Yes, the reason behind seeing this guy's bare feet at that one notorious E3 presentation is all thanks to Wii Music's drum mode. This mode allows you to play every song in the game with a more intricate drumming style, with four different drum sets to choose from, a free play mode to thrash about in, and even lessons for those who want to try and learn. Hope you don't know how to play drums, because today we're gonna learn. And if you do know how to play drums, or are a drummer at any competent level, God help you. Thanks to having the Wii Balance Board, we're able to simulate the full, standard experience of playing a drum set. By shaking either the Wii Remote or Nunchuck, you'll hit a hi-hat, and you'll press down with your left foot on the Wii Balance Board for the hi-hat pedal. The right foot is used for the bass drum, which, if you're unfamiliar with drums, is actually used quite a lot, so you better get used to it. Holding Z or B will hit the snare drum, holding A or C will hit one of the cymbals, and using the control stick or the D-pad will hit one of the toms. Left for left, up or down for the middle, and right for right. That in particular sounds awkward, and it can be, but for the lessons there are, you only have to mess with the toms once. You can technically play everything with just a Wii Remote or just an Nunchuck, but for the patterns you're going to be playing here, having both is a necessity, since making multiple inputs at once is a common thing in both playing songs regularly and going through the lessons. And speaking of lessons, there's a decent amount to go through here, 15 in total. This isn't like the other kind of lessons, where it teaches you the general sound of a style through a solo ensemble, one instrument at a time, with each varying style being done in a very copy-paste way. No, these are all unique, and go over a bunch of different things revolving around playing drum sets, including posture, using each part of a typical drum set, memorizing patterns, and bringing everything together, sans toms. Not just drum-specific things either, but general music stuff, such as teaching about quarter, eighth, and by the end, sixteenth notes. It's on the lighter side, but it's certainly more musically inclined than the lessons in the main game. There's even two dedicating to focusing on soul pattern and rock style, so you get a bit of that genre experience in there too. And it's all done with various different songs, including Mute City, Do Re Mi, the Super Mario Brothers theme, and the song that basically headlines in this mode, September, which is used several times, including the first and final lesson. Said final lesson even has you memorizing a pattern 16 beats long, or rather, it's two similar 8 beat patterns put together, but still. And it's not like the other lessons, where you can ignore the tutorials and just breeze through the performances doing fuck all. No, you have to do it, and do it right. There's no skipping parts here, you have to play through every step, while also making sure you're playing the parts right. To get past a part, you'll have to play the pattern they give you enough times consistently, with the last one in a lesson going for twice as long. Mess up hard enough at any point, and you lose that progress and have to keep another consistent pattern going. They want you to learn this stuff. There's even two different results you can get for a lesson, a check mark for just passing, and a crown for doing the final pattern really well. And let me tell you, I wanted all crowns, but uh... Now let's see if I can do this to get the fucking crown. I'm, I don't want to play this beat anymore. Oh, don't say really solid at the end there. Taking stretches. Gotta do it again. Gotta fucking do it again. Don't just give me the option to redo that part. I don't want to do all this fucking unnecessary bullshit. No, no, don't. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. That fucking end. I'm not doing. I'm not going for the crown. I'm, I'm skipping the crown. 
Oh, my body parts are so tired. All of them. All the body parts. It's- I'm, I'm- my brain's getting scrambled. My brain's getting scrambled. I can't fucking stand this anymore. I got robbed! What? No, why is an untruck not working? You have to remember, this is still the Wii. Even with the added help of the Wii balance board, there are limits to what you can do and how well the Wii works. The motion controls usually work, but sometimes you'll find that the Wii Remote and Nunchuck can be either not sensitive enough, or what is more often the case, especially with an Nunchuck, too sensitive. Because I'm just trying to like, you know, do the thing and it's just like, with the jerks I'm making with the Wii Remote is also doing the Nunchuck and then I'm trying to move back, it shakes the Nunchuck and makes an extra note. It's better with the balance board, just make sure your feet are firmly on the board if you're sitting down like I was, because otherwise it can get a bit shaky. It's also better to use it barefoot rather than wearing socks, but for obvious reasons, I can't do that here. The obvious downside here is that you aren't actually using drums, so you're not gonna get that tactile feedback of actually hitting drums and cymbals, or have the whole drum set physically in front of and around you. On top of that, you're not actually hitting where the parts of the drum are, you're pressing buttons to use them. Sure, you can be like me and try to do that, but where you swing the Wii Remote and Nunchuck doesn't actually matter. Yeah, honestly, that's the thing that's the hardest part about this. It's switching the fucking buttons. Pressing A and B, because I can you, I can do the motions just fine, but I gotta press a button on top of that. Which, yeah, that's the limitation here, but this is the first time where I'm like, hey, this is actually way harder than playing regular drums, because of the limitations. All that being said, though, these are all things you would kind of expect from a drum simulation on the Wii. It doesn't make it better, and sure, there are other virtual drum simulators that are obviously superior, but for what it is, and for what it's worth, it's honestly pretty solid. Like, let's make a comparison between this and the, at the time, Rock Band drum experience. Sure, the Rock Band drums are more fun to use, since you'll be playing a bunch of awesome rock songs, there's an actual spring-loaded foot pedal, and you'll actually be hitting things with drumsticks. I lost mine, and I don't have any others, so I'm making do. But, this is fashioned more like a game controller rather than an actual drum set. You get more of the drumming vibe, but playing a bunch of a game like Rock Band 1 isn't exactly teaching you how to play those songs on an actual drum set, since the simplicity of the controller won't allow for some of the more intricate playing of songs. It's more meant for fun. And by god, it's fun. Hey, Future Seater here. I just wanted to mention that after recording some drumming gameplay from Rock Band for the video, I realized that I was probably being too harsh on the Rock Band drums here. Like, yeah, it's maybe not great for learning the drumming basics and all that, but I feel like learning the drum parts to specific songs is more than manageable with Rock Band. I probably only felt like I did because I never really played songs outside of Easy and Normal back in the day, which are pretty simple and, well, easy. But after trying Go With The Flow on hard... Yeah, that's a real ass drum part that I can't play without legit practice. Like, you figure that out and you'll be able to invoke the spirit of Dave Grohl whenever you want. Maybe not great for the basics, but it's probably plenty for learning the drum parts of songs. It's worth more credit than I was originally going to give. More on that for another time. Now, Rock Band 4 is a different story, but with the pro drum kits and all that, but that came out years later. We're talking about 2008. With the Wii Music Drum experience, sure the songs aren't as good, sure there's hardly any tactile feedback, and overall it just isn't as fun, but for the purpose of getting someone into drumming and teaching them the ropes to be better adjusted for when they actually start using a drum kit, I think this is, even still, a solid option. Like I said, there are better options out there, especially now, and I'm not recommending that you buy a Wii or Wii U, Wii Music, a Wii Remote and Nunchuck, and a Wii Balance Board just to learn how to play drums. Like, at that point, it's just get a drum set. But if you're someone like me, who already has all that, or at least most of it, and you're kinda interested in playing drums, give it a go. The shortcomings are there, but really, they were only half the reason I didn't get these last two crowns. The other half being my low patience with music practice. Ah, oh, right at the end, yes. I wasn't doing great the whole time, but now I gotta do all the practice again, which won't make me any better. Now, when it comes to actual drummers trying this out, I feel like they're gonna give this a harder time. And reasonably so. The muscle memory of playing real drums so much, I would imagine, could mess with playing the drums here. Even for me, having to press a button to hit a cymbal wasn't ideal, so imagine that for someone who's used to just hitting a cymbal that's right there. Obviously, nothing beats the real thing, and playing on actual drums is a very real experience. But as a gamer, with little to no drum experience, this is a nice way to wrap your head around playing drums. 
I honestly do think Nintendo put in all this effort with the drum mode here because they really believed in it. Sure, it's all optional, because they otherwise wanted to keep things simple with Wii Music and probably didn't want to knock too much of the game away from people without the proper equipment, but the care and attention is absolutely there, a lot more than you would expect from an extra mode in Wii Music. They wanted something you could have fun with, like with the rest of the game, but also something a little more developed, and that could be used as a legitimate learning tool. Now, I can't speak on it 100% myself, because I'm yet to actually touch a drum set and see how what I did with this mode could apply to that. But, the developers actually had staff members who didn't play drums go through all the lessons to completion and, afterward, try and play on real drums. And, son of a bitch, they could play the parents they learned from the game. The team that worked on Wii Music really seemed proud of what they did here, and I get it. I might not have gotten the chance to give it a go myself yet, but believe me when I say that going through this extra mode and the lessons it gave me made me much more confident about sitting on a stool in front of a drum set and trying to play it legitimately. More than Rock Band ever did, at least. But... There is a reason I spent way more time on Rock Band back in the day, even just talking about the time I spent playing the drum parts, than I ever did with Wii Music. Because it's a lot more fun. Earlier in this video, I went over how Wii Music was indeed a music game. It was less so focused on being like other music games at the time, trying to bring out the fun of music with the game, rather than music being used in a game for a game. They wanted the game to be different, have its own unique place in the gaming landscape, and you can tell the developers really cared about music in this project. And these are talented people too, sure it was a first for some of them in several regards, but they had a passion and knack for music and gaming. So what about this game really made it miss the mark? There are issues with Wii Music that I've gone over in this video, the repetitive lessons, the general limitations of the Wii, the song list, which all things considered isn't decent, but it could have been better. No trombone. But overall, what I believe to be the biggest issue with Wii Music is that it's just... confused. You may have noticed something with this game by now, or rather not noticed, that after going through the whole tutorial, and even afterwards when starting the game up again, that there's no title screen. You start off here. This is for all intents and purposes, the main screen. Also odd, on the screen in the bottom left corner, there's an option that allows you to return to the Wii menu. Kind of redundant, since you can do that at any point in any Wii game by just hitting the home button on the Wii remote, but still. There's also this thing with the game where on the first page of menus, instead of the back arrow, you have this yellow circle that I think is supposed to represent the main screen. It's great, because you have to point and click at it, despite every other part of the menus here working with button controls. Like, just let me back up by pressing B, this is totally unnecessary and frustrating. Oh yeah, I didn't go over this before because it's kind of self-explanatory, but the last section here is for the videos you make. It's a way to sort your videos, watch them, rank them, and... share them? Yeah, sharing videos. You can't do this now because the Wii's internet functionality is gone, kind of, but you are originally able to send the videos you made in the game to your friends. Not only that, but you could change the video and work over it, changing parts and making a sort of collab with your friends. Oh, that's why I didn't know about this. Those are the kind of things that makes Wii Music feel more like a program or application for musical experimentation, which is something I definitely wanted to go for. Except you're on the Wii, so good luck trying to do that. At the same time, you're limited to the songs that the game has to offer. And past messing with those songs, there's hardly any musical experimentation in Wii Music. It's otherwise learning and minigames. They wanted to keep things simple, so that anyone could do this kind of stuff, so they didn't take things too far. That's kind of the problem, though. It's ironic, because despite wanting to be different from games like Guitar Hero and Rock Band, which were limited to playing the songs exactly how they were, Wii Music allows you to play songs however you want. But it's still limited to the songs. Wii Music was meant as a way to allow people who aren't musically inclined to get that sort of feeling of playing a musical instrument, both alone or as part of an ensemble, in the pick-up-and-play way that Nintendo likes to do, especially around this time. There was also that hope that playing Wii Music would encourage people to take that first step into learning a real musical instrument, or music in general. They wanted people to flirt with the idea that there are a million different ways to play the same song, and to improvise with how to play the instruments in those songs. This mix of being easy to play and encouraging experimentation came from the director, Kazumi Tataka, and his experience with playing other music games at the time. At one point, he wanted to play a song perfect for fun, did it, but played an extra note at the end to celebrate and ended up not getting the perfect. I can't play any car! The idea of only playing what was required of you strictly and nothing more was something he really wanted to avoid in Wii Music, 
A big reason of why they don't show you the music flow guide at the start of songs is because they want you to experiment with ways to play the song, not just going by what the chart says. Actually, the score not being shown by default was something that they considered a lot throughout the game's development, even thinking early on to drop them all together, only deciding to leave it off by default fairly late into development. So how did they end up getting to that? Don't look at me like that. And that brings us to another problem. Focusing too much on the scores makes it too much like a typical music game, so they were tasked to work around that and convey the fun a player could have without them. After all, the idea of the game is to have fun not just playing music, but being creative in how you play it. This was a, if not the, core idea of Wii Music, so it would be vital to deliver and portray that correctly to players, and I think they went about it in a rather poor way. It is kind of a flawed idea to begin with, at least in this context. They want people to experiment with ways to play the songs, but you kind of have to know how to play the part first. Even with knowing a song beforehand, that doesn't mean you'll know how to play much more than, say, the melody. And, to give Wii Music credit, when you do know the part and feel like spicing things up accordingly, it can be pretty fun. Do a makeshift jazz solo on the saxophone. Go ham on the guitar melody of Mute City. Ruin O Christmas Tree with appropriately inappropriate cymbal crashes. <laughs> When you know what playing the song is like, improvising on it can be a good time. And that's the problem. This is supposed to be a simple, pick up and play kind of deal, but in order to get the kind of fun I mentioned, you have to put the time in to learn this stuff. You don't have to, you can just play however you want, no regard to the part or song you're supposed to play, but there's only so much enjoyment out of that. You could bring out the score to know what to do, but that'll likely encourage people to just play it straight, focusing more on playing it correctly instead of improvising which is something they thought of. That way, even someone who didn't understand music at all would do all right by following the notation, but then everyone would think adhering to the score was the right way and never get beyond that. So either the score is on, and a player's mindset will often shift to trying to play the song right, or the score is off, and a player is left to mess around and is limited to their knowledge of the material. You're limited to your fun, because the kind of fun they wanted people to have in Wii Music isn't really possible unless you put the time in to learn things. But at that point, WHY NOT JUST LEARN HOW TO PLAY A FUCKING INSTRUMENT?! Of course people thought Wii Music was boring, when you have to dedicate time to the game to know what to do in order to properly have fun with it and get the most out of it. That's more than just asking, hey, play our game in order to have fun regardless of musical experience. Which it SAYS it can do, it's what it WANTS you to do, apparently. But all those stuff that developers talked about with experimenting with music being where the real fun of the game is requires more than that. Playing instruments with a Wii Remote in Nunchuck is all fine and dandy. It's not too deep, but that's fine. That's the point. It's easy to understand. Playing music is the meat of the game, though, and messing around with the songs like the developers want you to isn't simple. Something like Wii Sports works in a broad sense because sports are simple, and that game simplifies the sports even more to work in the video game environment it wants to set up, but while still leaving intact what people love about actually playing those sports. If someone plays Wii Sports despite not knowing what baseball is, somehow, they could still figure out how to play it in the game in no time flat and have a great one-off experience. In a similar sense, if a baseball pro played Wii Sports, they could still have some good fun with it, because even though it's dumbed down from what they typically know, it still has the aspect of being a video game. It's similar, but different enough. Now, put those two people together, with wildly different baseball experience levels, and suddenly they're both playing a baseball game at a similar level. It's not the real thing, but it's not supposed to be. It makes a clear distinction between simulation and the real deal, while still having similar vibes. And this works, because the sports they chose are simple enough to translate into a simple game. For Wii Music, they're trying to apply that idea to... music. Instead of, say, trying to swing a bat correctly, you're trying to play an instrument. That in and of itself, I don't think is a bad idea. But the only time you're playing the instruments in this game is an instrument improv, which is more of a try it out kind of section, or while playing songs. When you're playing a song, you have to worry about all the nuances of that song, and the instrument you're playing, all while potentially keeping up with the other people playing that song. That's music in general, but even with Wii Music's simplicity, you still have those aspects to consider. Also, improvising, even with those who know how to play an instrument somewhat, is not exactly beginner-friendly. Some people are fairly adept at it, but a good chunk of people often get cold feet at the idea. All this can be a lot to take in, so it's no wonder that people focus on playing according to the score, not seeing the big picture, and not getting into it. 
It's ironic that the main mode of the game, where you play songs, is called the jam mode, because I think a more traditional kind of jam is a lot more friendly to beginners than what they've done here. This is an accordion. Do I know how to play the accordion? No. I mean... I can play it, but I couldn't tell you any of the chords, read sheet music for it, anything like that. But, one time, my brother invited me to a jam session with his girlfriend and asked me to play it. He showed me how to do like, three different chords at the time, and that's all I did. We didn't perform any actual songs, we just kind of played on the instruments. And it sounded good! And it was fun! That small jam session I had for like an hour with my brother and his girlfriend one night in our garage did what we music wishes it could. This isn't music to work in a video game format, it's still music. Sure, the game encourages you to play how you feel, but even then, you're not actually playing the notes. You're not pressing down valves, hitting keys, or anything like that to make the sound you may want. You're pressing a button or shaking a stick to make a noise. Which granted, there are instruments that are literally just that, but you get what I mean. What comes out may sound right, but it's ultimately random. There's no encouragement to do things right, which is the point, to not worry about playing things correctly and just have fun. But that means that the point is that there is no point. It's just messing around with music while having the safety net of having whatever you do sound right. Not like a musical tool, but a musical toy. In trying to be broad for music like Wii Sports was to sports, Wii Music ends up being... shallow. It dumbs things down for beginners, but at the same time tries not to be too much like a video game, and ends up being too complex for those uninitiated because it's still music. It's a music game, but it isn't really much of a game. Oh god, maybe Miyamoto was right. What I think Wii Music should have done was lean more into the game aspect of music or the learning aspect, and make something with a more focused, easily understood idea. And the thing is, the game has examples of both. On the game side, there's Mi Maestro, ironically enough where this whole game stemmed off from. It's simple to control, musically you only really worry about tempo, you hardly need any experience with it beforehand, and best of all, it's fun! It's also a great example of a music-based game that isn't just like other rhythm games. They could have given you more songs to choose from, make more minigames in the style that play with music in a similarly fun way, and bam! Potential for a great music-based game. On the learning aspect, there's the drum mode. Sure, it required an extra accessory, but still, didn't stop other Wii games. Fuck. And even at that, the lessons here were in every way better than they were in the main game, and not just from explaining the wider array of controls. It does a better job of going over tempo, rhythm patterns, different musical notes, all while teaching you about the instrument you're playing. Maybe instead of having the lessons be focused on different musical styles in a copy-paste format, they could teach you about what makes certain instruments tick, musical notation, I don't know. They've clearly shown they know how to do it, and that they know music, and they know games, so why didn't it yield better results than what we got? But you know what would have made none of that matter? You know what would have completely overridden all the problems that this game had, made everyone overlook those flawed concepts, and make Wii music worth remembering for more than just an embarrassing E3 moment? A music creator. You have all of these simulated instruments in a game that's supposed to encourage creativity with music, that already lets you record your performances and re-record over them, and yet there's no music creator. The only thing slightly reminiscent of something like that is this bit during the Pitch Perfect minigame. I mentioned Wii Music Editor Plus before, and it's great that there's at least a mod that lets you make your own stuff, but why isn't something like that just in the game to begin with? How in God's name does Mario Paint, a Super Nintendo game from 1992, have a music creator, but Wii Music doesn't? Hell, WarioWare DIY came out not too long after this game, and that has a music creator. And yet, the music game, with music in the title, does not have one. What? Also, uh, future Zeter here again because I thought this way late in the video's production. Uh, there's nothing in Wii Music that lets you just play the notes you want on an instrument. You can't diddle on an instrument like that. L like, there's no way you're gonna be able to do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do on anything in this game, which automatically gives any game with that sort of playability with an instrument a leg up on Wii Music. Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Here comes Nico. 
I'm feeling the blues. I had in time with the ukulele mod. But uh, no, Wii Music gives you no such option. Bruh. You see what I mean? Confusing. This game was confused and it confused players. Above all, I think what I'm still confused most by is whether or not I like this game. Look, I'm not hard to please. Put something in front of me that prevents me from staring at a wall and I'll get something out of it. I can also stare at a wall for an unreasonable amount of time, but that's just between you and me. But for pretty much the whole time I played this game to record it, although I did enjoy my time with the game, I just wanted to go back and play Rhythm Heaven Fever, or Rock Band, but especially Rhythm Heaven Fever. Oh, yes. Wii Music is not bad. I respect what the developers were going for, but in trying to make something different from everyone else, they ended up making something not very special. It's unique, but not in a way that makes it particularly impressive. That being said, although there were some goals that the developers didn't quite work out in Wii Music, I think they were successful in others, at least in some regards. For example, back in part 2, I mentioned this quote from Kazumi Tataka on what he wanted the game to do for those not yet into music. I've always hoped this game would serve as the starting point for new encounters with music. I think there's a connection between the fun I have playing this game and the enjoyment I get out of playing a real musical instrument, so I'm not exaggerating when I say Wii Music could lead you to take up a real musical instrument. I sincerely hope people who have given up on music or think they're not the type to play an instrument will play this game. At the very least, it seemed like the director of this game wanted Wii Music to be an introduction to music, something that would drive people to really get into the world of playing and creating music. Now, on a personal level, I can't say that it worked for me. In my case, I got into playing an instrument through personally knowing people who already played one, as well as knowing people who were also interested in learning how to pick up an instrument. With music in general, some of that came through learning to play this year trombone, but most of my desire came from just listening to music I really enjoyed. As someone who originally played Wii music before any of that, at the age of 8 to 9, this game did nothing to spur me onto music. In the end, Rock Band did way more for my musical experience just purely because I liked the music. Singing Danny California over and over had a more lasting impact on me than anything in Wii music, save for maybe the drum mode and that's something I only properly experienced now. Bro, I was a dumb kid. There was no shot I was memorizing all those patterns and controls then. But here's the thing. That's just me and my experiences. Because despite what I and many other people have said about this game and its shortcomings, there's still a fair amount of people who got a lot out of Wii Music. People who loved playing this game as a kid. People who got into music or music production through this game. I think Wii Music could have done a better job to get more people into that sort of thing, or at least be more fun, but that doesn't mean it can't do that for some people. Wii Music was far from a failure. It sold almost 3 million copies, and although it missed the mark for people like me, I'm sure there were plenty out of that 2 plus million crowd that got what they were looking for, and then some. People make dedicated mods for this game, that's proof enough that there is at least some impact. And look, despite Wii Music not getting great reviews and being one of the only two Wii series games that never got a sequel, the other being Wii Chess, oh wow, big surprise, I think Nintendo still has that desire to deliver simple and easy ways to introduce people to music. Look at stuff like the piano and the Nintendo Labo Variety Kit and what people have done there. I think that, maybe not a sequel, but some sort of spiritual successor to Wii Music could be really cool. I think something like this is worth another go. I mean, it's music. There's a million different ways to go about it, and I'm sure with the prior experience of this game, as well as everything else they've done since then, there's plenty of potential for what Nintendo could possibly do. I'm glad I finally looked back on Wii Music and came to terms with it, because as someone who eventually did really get into music, just not through playing this game when I did as a kid, it was a nice bit of closure for me. Closure in a way that'll make me never have to open this game case again. Anyhow!